In this video, let's talk about object class. Remember when we talked about inheritance, I also mentioned that every class in Java extends the object class. So in this video, let's try to understand what is that. So what I will do here is, first of all, I will create a simple class, let's say class A. So every class in Java extends the object class, right? So even if you don't mention it, it is there. But what is there inside this class? So what I will do is, first of all, I will say, let me create object of A here. I will say A. And uh, okay, so we got the object, but then using this object, you can you can see we can call so many methods. We have not defined any method in this class, but still we have the access of equals method. Then we got notify hash code, uh, notify all to string wait, so many methods, right? Now what they do? So let's understand that. So what I will do is, in fact, in, instead of uh, this, I will say laptop class just for the example. And here also, let me get object of laptop here. So I will say laptop obj equal to new laptop. Okay. Now I will try to create some variables here. So I will say private int, uh, let's say price. And let me also get a string variable here, which is private string brand. Okay. So we got these two laptops. So I can say model as well. So we got model and price, right? So if you talk about MacBook or Dell XPS or Lenovo laptops, or it doesn't matter which laptop it is, we have a model and we have a price here. Now, if you talk about this particular laptop here, let me set the values to it. And time, you know what I will do? I will just remove this private so that I can access it from outside here. And I can say, OB, uh, okay, so I will say obj dot model. I will set the model as let's say Lenovo, I don't know, is it a laptop yoga? Maybe. And then I will say obj dot price is equal to let's say thousand dollars. Okay, so I got a laptop. I am I got the values right. What if I try to print the object? What happens behind the scene when I try to print the object? Of course, we tried this before and it was giving some weird output. Let's understand what that output is. Now, if you try to concentrate on this output, of course, this is not the values which we set, but it it prints laptop and it actually makes sense because obj is a laptop object. And then we got the at the rate symbol. And then we got some weird numbers. I'm assuming they are hexadecimal values because you can see we got A, D, F, they are part of hexadecimal numbers. Okay, so these are the hexadecimal format, but what is it? Let's try to understand that. Now, what if I say, every time you try to print the object, it by defaults behind the scene, it will call the two string method. Let me repeat, every time you try to print the object, it will call to string method, even if you don't mention, yeah? And okay, by doing those changes, let me just run this code once again, compile and run. You can see it, is, it prints the same thing. That means, yes, it is getting called. But what to string is doing? So if I go to to string, now, first of all, to string is not my method. If you can see in laptop class, we don't have any method called to string, but in the object class, there is. You can see we got a two string method, which returns a string, right? That's what we are printing, right? It returns something. What it returns? It returns the class name. If you can see, it says get class. Get class method will give you the class name. Then it calls get name. So class name, okay? That is laptop, okay, it's working. And then we got added symbol in between, okay? That also makes sense why we got added it there. And then it prints something in hexa string. That's why we got hexadecimal values here. But what exactly it represents? It converts the number into hexadecimal string and that number is actually hash code. Now, what is hash code? If you go to hash code, again, it belongs to the same class and behind the scene implementation for hash code works with the, it basically generates the hash based on the values you have, okay? Now, hash is a very simple concept in terms of uh, cryptography and anywhere. It tries to create a single string of all the data which you have. So let's say if you have an object which has five variables, it will apply a hash algorithm and it will generate a string, a number string, which will be of fixed size. Okay. Uh, to know more about hash code, uh, you can just go to YouTube and search for what is hash or go to Google and search for what is hash. But at this point, we are returning a hash code. Okay, that's what we got here. Okay, now the thing is, we are trying to print this, right? So by default, it is calling two string and that's why we got this output. But what if when I try to print the object, it will print something which I want. And one thing we know that if you don't have a method in your class, it will call the method of a superclass. But what if I create that method itself. 
So the public method which returns a string, the method name is to string. If I implement this method, and if I return something, if I return say, hey, that's it. And if I clear this and compile and run, oh, it says, hey, you know, it's not printing the laptop class name and hexadecimal values. It's just trying to call to string, which is this, and it is returning, hey. It's not going for the super class here. That is awesome. Now let me also try by deleting this thing, okay? Let's not call to string by ourselves. Let's see if it is getting called automatically. It is happening, right? Now, whatever you want to return, you can do that here, right? What I want to return is I want to return the model information with a colon in between and the price so that it will print that particular data. Compile and run. You can see it, it says Lenovo Yoga uh, $1,000. Okay, so that's how we can basically work with the object class methods. If you don't mention, it will be uh, coming automatically by the object class. Now there's one more thing. Let's say if I create one more object of laptop and this time let's say the values are same. Let's say this is object one, object two. This is the object one, one. Okay, don't give me suggestions, yeah. This is two and two. Now if you compare these two objects, are they same? Yes, the values are same. But do we have the objects which are same? Let's try. How will you compare this? So I can, what I can do is I can just create a Boolean variable here and I can say result is equal to, how do I compare obj1 dot obj2 or obj1 is equal to equal to obj2? Let's try. I mean, we can use double equal to between obj1 and obj2 as well. Let's try to print the result and let's see what happens. If I compile this code and run, Oh, it says false. Okay, maybe using double equal to is not a good idea. Let's use some inbuilt methods. If you can see obj1 actually has a method called equals. It checks for the equals. Okay, that's great. It checks for the equals of obj1 and obj2. Okay, uh, let me try this. I hope this will work. Compile and run. Oh, it is still giving you false. Why? The objects are same, right? The thing is, if you go with the equals method here, you can see in our class, we don't have equals. And the equals is actually coming from the object class. It basically compares the two objects by their hexadecimal number. We don't do that. So we want to compare them based on their values. So one thing we can do is we can implement the equals method by ourselves. So we want an equals method, which will return a Boolean value. The method name is equals, and it will accept only one object. I will say this as an object of the same type, laptop. Because we are comparing laptop with laptop, I will say this is other. And then the object which is calling this equals is this object. And we have passed one more object here, which is other. Or maybe I can say this is this and that. So this is that object, this object. So we are comparing two objects. Now, how do I compare? I can check if this dot model dot equal. Uh, so when you talk about this model, it's a string, right? Now string has equals implemented properly. So we can use string equals to compare this string. And this dot, uh, we are comparing that dot model, right? We are comparing two strings here. And we have to also compare the price. This dot price is equal to equal to that dot price. Now why I'm using equal to for integer? Because that's how it works, right? And we have to also say open and close. If this matches, then I will return true, else I will return false. Simple, right? And since we have only one statement, I can actually do this, right, in one line. You can see I'm just comparing the values here. I'm comparing these two strings, which is model, model, and price and price. It will not use the equals of object class. It will use the equals of my own class. Let's see if that works. Compile and run. Oh, it works. Can you see that we got true? Now, if I change the value, let's say it becomes yoga one. And if I try to compile and run, you can see it, it says false because we have a different value. Cool. Okay. In fact, you know, I can actually simplify this more. Why to even mention if else? Anyway, this is returning true and false, right? What I can actually do is the entire stuff from here, you can cut this part and say return the entire string because the string itself will compare and it will return true or false. I can do that in one line. Yeah, this one way. But there are some rules in Java if you are trying to do equals. When you, when you say two objects are equal, uh, of course they should have a same value and they should also have a same hash code. So what I mean by that is 
don't define the equals and equals method by yourself. You can use your ID and you can say source action. And you can see it gives you an option of generate hash code and equals. Click on that. Select all the variables which you want to compare and click on OK. It will generate the equals method for you. And you can see it does multiple checks. We have only checks for the value. But what if you want to check if the object is not null? Maybe you want to check for the class name as well. Maybe you want to check uh, if the model is not null before comparing. So it, it does multiple checks for you. It's a, it, it's a good practice. And that's why I say sometimes you have to prefer your own IDE output. And it also implements hash code. You know, this is how the hash code is generated. Basically, uh, it takes your data and works uh, and, and applies some algorithm on your data to generate the result. If this algorithm can change. You can implement your own algorithm. But of course, it should have all the variables which should come, comes into play. Example, let's say I have one more string here, which is serial number. And I am okay if two objects have the same model number. I mean, same model, same price, but different serial number. That's okay with me. So maybe you can just skip this serial in your equals and hash code. Okay, that's the important thing. The thing you have to remember the here is the object class has multiple methods and we have worked with two string, which is here. In fact, you know, we don't even have to mention two string here. We can right click and we say source action, generate two string with both the variables. Okay, it will generate a two string for you, which is much, which gives you a much better output than what you can type. Now I know with by asking the code from your IDE, you get these two extra annotations here, in fact, three. This is actually, we'll discuss that once we talk about annotations. At this point, this is not needed. It's not compulsion, but it has some importance which we'll discuss later. Yeah, that's how we can use object class. We can work with hash code equals to string. And yeah, that's it from this video.